I'm Jane Finley. Um, I'm a visual artist here in Calgary, and I'm also part of Creative Age in Calgary. So today I will be leading a workshop that is inspired by Van Gogh's Starry Nights. So I'll walk you through all the steps on how to make this beautiful painting. Um, so the only materials that we're going to need are a canvas, a variety of different sizes of paintbrushes, some different colors of acrylic paint, and some water of course. I like to just use um, a yogurt container, uh, but you could use a plastic cup or any other container that you find in your recycling bin. Works well. And then I also like to use the lid for the yogurt container um, as a palette. If you don't have one of these, you could just use some tin foil to put your paint on. And then we're also going to need one piece of chalk. And the last thing we need is some paper towel or just an old rag that you can brush your paintbrushes on. Okay, so I've already painted my background for this, just to save a little bit of time. Um, so you just want to use any shade of blue. You can see for this one I used um, kind of a light periwinkle for the background color for the painting I'm doing today. It's more of a turquoise color. Um, I've also tried like a dark blue. So you can get creative, mix some different colors and pick your favorite blue. So all we're going to do once you have your color is you're going to take a nice big brush, the biggest brush you have, and just cover the whole entire thing. Nothing too fancy. So once this is dry, then we're going to get started with the fun stuff. So we're going to be using our piece of chalk just to draw the outlines for everything. So you can see in this painting, we have um, the sky, the land, a tree here, and then there's also some stars and the moon. So that's what we're going to be drawing on with our chalk. And I really like using chalk because um, you can erase it if you make any mistakes. So I'm just going to make the horizon line there. And I think it's a bit too big, so I'm just going to wipe it off. You can wipe it off with your finger or with a damp cloth. As long as our paint is dry. So I'll just make my fill here like that. We're gonna add in our tree next so a little bit over to the side and we don't want it to be too too big um, because I think the sky is really the star of the show here, no pun intended. So the tree is nothing too fancy it's just kind of a wacky little shape like this. And then we can add a couple branches on there. Almost like um, a skinny S shape, right? I'll make a taller one here. And that's it for my tree, nice and simple. So the last thing we need to add is our moon and our stars. So for the moon, I like to put it in the opposite corner of my tree. And we're just gonna draw a nice big circle. Doesn't have to be perfect. And then we can just add a C shape to get a nice crescent moon. Now we're going to add in some stars. So I'll show you here. We've got about six stars there. And they're all different sizes. So just put those in, make some big, some small. Maybe one over here by the moon. One, two, three, four, go down here, five, and where do I want to put that guy? Six, down here. And you know what? I think I'll put this guy down just a little bit so we get more of a zigzaggy kind of effect. Okay, so now we have all of our outlines drawn out. 
we can put our chalk away. And now we'll get to the fun part, painting. So you can see that in this painting, we're using lots of really short brush strokes to make little dashes and we're overlapping them. And that's how you get this effect. So we're gonna start with our darkest color first. So I like to start with black. Add a little bit of that on my palette. And with our smallest brush, we're just gonna take a nice dab of black paint. And we're gonna start by just going around the moon and the stars. Making these short little dashes. It doesn't have to be perfect. There we go. And then we're also going to just draw on that horizon line as well, using our little dashes. Okay. So you can see what we've done here. So now we are going to fill in the rest of our background using these dashes in black and we're gonna follow all the curves of those circles in the horizon line so it'll look really nice and flowy so i like to start by just going a second time around all of those circles You can follow the horizon line as well. So all of your brush strokes are following the same direction as the curves of the stars and the horizon. And you can actually overlap a little bit onto the tree. That's fine, oops. Okay, just about filled in here. There we go. So that's our first set of dashes and you can already see that it's got a lot of rhythm and flow to it. So now we're gonna start working our way um, to lighter colors. We're just gonna keep on repeating the same steps over and over until it gets nice and filled in. But we'll work our way from dark to light. So you can really use um, any cool colors here different shades of blues, purples, greens. Give your brush a really good wash. Don't want that black in there. So I like to just um, put some different cool colors on my palette. So I'm gonna use my dark blue, light blue, Got a couple of greens here as well. I'll throw those on. Just 
So we've got a whole variety of colors. And I'm also gonna put some white in there too because we wanna start lightening some of these colors up. Okay, so I'm gonna mix a couple colors here. Don't be afraid to try mixing different colors together. Um, I always find colors that you mix are a lot more beautiful than colors that come right out of the tube. They're a little bit more interesting. So I'm gonna stick with a nice dark blue. So I'll take some of this kind of royal blue here. I'm gonna add a hint of black in there. So then we end up with kind of this dark navy. And maybe I'll throw in a little bit of that light blue for fun. A bit more of this. Okay, so we've got kind of this like gray blue color going on here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and follow those same steps. And you don't wanna put your dashes directly on top of the dashes that you've already made. Um, we wanna overlap things for sure. But you wanna be able to see all of the layers. And this part's really easy because you already have the guidelines from that first set that you painted on there. Try not to get your paint too, too globby because then it's not going to dry and then it's going to mush into all your other colors. It's okay if they smudge a little bit, but we still want them to look like separate dashes. Okay, so you can see how the space is really starting to fill up now that we have two colors going on there. There we go. So I'll give my brush a little rinse. And if your water's starting to get too muddy, just go get some new water. We don't want muddy colors. So we're gonna start working our way lighter and lighter. So I'm gonna add a hint of white to this royal blue that I have here. And it's also fine if your colors aren't completely blended to make one solid color. I always like to have a little bit of variation so you see what the color is made up of. So you can see a little bit of white in there and different shades of blue. Okay, so I think I'm going to add a hint more blue. It's a little lighter than I want it. There we go. Okay, so now we're going to follow the same step again. And you'll notice how some of these colors just really pop against the background color.
So just keep following those lines. Make sure you're not forgetting any spots. Okay, so that's our third color on there and we're just going to keep on working with other colors here. So I'm going to add a hint of green to this blue I have, see what happens. white to that. You can really have fun with mixing these colors. And the nice thing about this kind of painting is you really don't have to be exact. There we are, starting to come together. So I think I'm gonna add a little bit more of this royal blue. I'm just taking what was left of on my brush and just mixing that into the royal blue. And we're going to go around again. I'm going to pick two more colors, so I'm going to try and get um, another color that's actually maybe even a little bit of a different tone. Okay, so I'm going to mix a little bit of my blue in with some green now. You want lots of variety in your colors.
Okay, so I've got this nice green here. I'm gonna go around like that. Really gives it a nice pop of color. And I like to make sure I pick one color that's really gonna pop. So you want a nice accent color in there. So just repeating those same steps. Okay, so you can see how that green really pops in there. Super nice. Okay, so now I'm gonna add one last color. I think this one I'm gonna go with a little more blue. So I'm just kind of sticking with that classic royal blue for my last color here. And we're just going to keep following those same dashes. You can see how the texture is building up really nicely. when all those dashes start to um, overlap, then it starts to have a lot of depth. Okay, so we're all done with our sky for now. We're gonna save the stars for later because we wanna make sure that the sky is super, super dry. You don't want any of the dark colors mixing into your yellows and then it's gonna get really muddy. You want a nice, bright, clean yellow for our stars and our moon. Okay, so we're just gonna rinse off our brushes. And now we're gonna be, um, working on the lands down here. So we're just gonna do the same thing. This one's a little bit easier because we don't have any stars to circle around. So, if you have some leftover colors on your palette, you can use those. And I like to, even though we're using some of the same colors, I do like to make them um, a little bit different than the colors in the sky, just so it's really defined what's the sky and what is the horizon line there. So you can see in this other one I did here too. I'm using a little bit more of the grays, so it's not quite as bright. Okay, so once again, we're gonna start with our black. Start with our darkest color and you can start right on that horizon line. It's fine if you go into the trees a little bit and actually I like to go 
overlap into the trees a little bit just so it doesn't look like it's outlined when you fill in the tree that way you don't have any blank space and you can just kind of follow the curve of that hill Okay, you can see really nice and easy there. And we're gonna start working into our other colors. So I've got this dark green I wanna use. Just added a hint of white into it. So it'll be a little bit lighter than that black. And we're just going to go ahead and do the same thing. This one goes a little bit quicker than the sky. You can pick some other colors there. So I'm gonna try and use up the paint that I already have here because I just don't like to waste extra paint. And if you wanna use up some of your paint, but you don't want the exact same colors, that are in the sky, you can always just start with one of those as a base and add another color to it or a bit of white. So we'll just go in there with some more colors. And that's exactly what I'm doing here. I'm taking some of my old colors I used for the sky and just adding another color to it. And if your paint starts to get a little bit dry and tacky, you can always add just a hint of water. So just dip your brush in the water and then add it into that paint. It'll get a little bit more fluid. There we go. And you want to make sure you don't forget about the bottom here either. We want to make sure we've, we're going all the way to the edges of our painting. So you can see how it's coming along. I think I'm going to add a little bit of a blue in there. But you can see how the color of the sky and the color of the land are different. A little bit more blue. And I'm going to add a bit of white to it. We want to make sure that we have some different values in there. So we've got some parts that are really dark and some other parts that are really light. I find it just adds a lot more visual interest. So add some couple of light colors in there as well. Keeps it from getting too muddy. Okay. And 
and I think I'll pick one more color. I'm going to add a little more green. Okay, there we go. We have our land right now. So while we're still waiting on our sky to dry, we're gonna go ahead and paint our tree. Okay, so I like to take whatever is the darkest color on the palette that you have. So whether that's a gray or um, dark blue or green, and we're gonna start using that for our tree. So we can just go ahead and Clean up that outline, just make that a little bit darker with some black. Okay. We're going to outline our tree. You want to make sure this tree goes all the way down to the bottom of your painting. If you lost a branch because it got covered up, and add that in. Okay, so now we have the shape for our tree here. And we're just gonna paint it with some really, really loose brush strokes. You can grab another color, um, like a green. And just fill that in really loosely. I'm gonna keep it really dark. So you can add in some black there's some really dark green to it. I'm gonna add just a hint of black. Okay, and our tree is done. So now it's time for us to do the stars and the moon. This is my favorite part. So you wanna make sure you wash off your paintbrush really nice, give it a good dry as well. Because we don't want any muddy colors for our stars and our moon. Once it's nice and clean, I'm actually going to flip over this container and use the top just so that none of those other colors get mixed into the yellows that I'm going to be using. Oops. Always happens a couple times. <laughs> so I'm going to grab some yellow. If you have two different kinds of yellows, you can definitely use that, like um, kind of a lemony and then more of a warm yellow. Um, if not, one yellow is just fine. You also want to add in a little bit of white, and that's not just going to make it lighter, but it's also going to make it more opaque so that the yellow can actually cover up the blue really, really nicely. Okay, so I'm just going to give that a nice quick mix. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. I think I'm gonna add a little bit more of this lemony yellow. Okay, and we are ready to go. So, you're gonna use that small brush again, and we're just gonna take this, and we're gonna very carefully just outline that moon. There we go. 
And now it's time for the stars. So you can grab kind of more of a glob of paint. I find it makes it easier to do those little circles. Just gonna fill these in carefully. And it's fine if they're not a perfect circle. If you have any chalk lines that are sticking out, um, once your painting's dry, you can just go over it with um, a damp cloth and just give it a gentle wipe and those chalk lines will come right off. Now that we have all of our stars and our moon finished, we're gonna go in and add these dashes around them. So it shows they're glowing really beautifully. So we can go with the same color and you can just make a couple of dashes around your moon or your stars. already starting to come to life. Um, you can add a few that are a little bit further out, but you don't want to get too crazy with too many dashes. And then the other spot we're going to add these is just along that horizon line. So it's kind of reflecting. Just a couple, not too many. So now we're just going to add a little bit more of this white into our yellow. Just get a paler yellow, almost white. And we're going to use that as well. So add a couple little highlights around all of your stars and the moon. on that horizon line as well. And lastly, you can add a couple of little highlights right on the ground there as well. I feel like that makes it really pop. There we go. And this is our finished Van Gogh inspired Starry Nights painting. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have fun making your painting.